Hello and what is up YouTube, my name is G3Iron and today we are making 10 predictions about items in the upcoming 3.10 Delirium League. If you are new to the channel, you can go ahead and like, subscribe and ding the bell to be notified about more video discussions just like this one. And if you're a veteran of the channel, then of course you know the drill around here, all of the timestamps and all of the information for all of our discussion pieces today will be linked down below in the video description. I mentioned timestamps because there should be some timestamps above my slightly balding forehead for your convenience if you want to reference any of these 10 predictions that we make and potentially make fun of us down below in the comments for the eventual inevitability that 9 out of 10 of these things are going to be wrong. The first prediction that I'd like to make today is that Rampage is going to be absolutely amazing in Delirium. We've got a league mechanic that is focused on giving already high dense maps more density with more monsters that will then augment other other monsters from previous leagues making even more monsters appear. So essentially, we've got an action RPG whose entire theme for the next three months is going to be killing monsters. Who would have thought that was possible? And Rampage, of course, gives you a stacking bonus. The more monsters you kill in each zone, going all the way up to 520 kills, giving you the top tier of Rampage benefits. For those of you, if you've never checked out Rampage before, we actually have an entire video on Rampage. So if Rampage is a new mechanic to you or you're new to Path of Exile, would highly, highly recommend that you click on in a new tab somewhere the floating card that's somewhere above my slightly balding forehead for more information about Rampage as a mechanic and why you should care about it this league. The second prediction that I would like to make today is that Headhunter will be amazing. Point to forehead, duh, right? Okay, so what do I mean when I say Headhunter will be amazing? Headhunters are always amazing in PoE. Well, typically when we've got highly dense league mechanics with lots of different monsters, specifically with lots of different rare monsters, Headhunter prices skyrocket because the value on Headhunter itself and the amount of monsters that you can kill using Headhunter generating more and more buffs for yourself goes goes up. We of course most recently saw this during the Legion League where players were of course rushing to get headhunters and headhunters in the softcore Legion League were comparable for about half of the league with Mirror of Calandra prices. It took about a month and a half for headhunter and Mirror of Calandra prices to balance out and there was a large portion of the league where headhunter was actually higher in value than Mirror of Calandra prices. So all of that is to say if this is your first league and you've never gotten a headhunter hunter before or maybe it's your 10th league and you've never gotten a headhunter before unfortunately if this prediction comes true this means that headhunter will be more expensive than ever well on the other hand it could be that it's more valuable than ever and so if you can get your hands on a headhunter early and often potentially whether that's flipping or using for yourself you're going to be making bonkers currency throughout the entirety of delirium league third prediction today is that inspired learning will be absolutely ridiculous. Remember all of the things that we just said about Headhunter? We've got density on top of density on top of density with rare monsters that you can steal all of their attributes. Well, all of that can be said about inspired learning. Of course, whenever you're playing a Headhunter build, you're going to want inspired learnings. The trick about inspired learnings when you are playing on a Headhunter build is really fitting in enough passives and fitting in enough jewel sockets so that way you can have as many inspired learnings as you possibly can run because, well, there's simply no limit to these. So unless patch notes come out and say you're limited to X number of inspired learnings, I fully expect the new jewel sockets that will be usable and the new allocatable nodes that will extend the passive tree to essentially be opportunities for you to simply fill them up with inspired learnings. We will have to wait until we get the full on passive tree until we actually are able to predict exactly how and slot into exactly how many inspired learnings we can fit into a headhunter build. But nonetheless, I want to give this to you as a heads up, as a fair warning, expect Inspired Learnings to skyrocket in price. Back during Legion League, you could expect Inspired Learnings to be anywhere around 30 Exalted, and typically in between 25 to 30x, depending on the time of League. Expect them to be very, very expensive once again during Delirium League. Fourth prediction today is that Unnatural Instinct will be at an all-time high price. The reason for this is because, of course, Unnatural Instinct gives you allocated small passive skills in Radius, grant nothing. Which, of course, as we are extending out our new passive tree into the upwards of 280 new passives that will be available with Delirium League, there's already one passive point that potentially isn't giving us anything anyway, so that really doesn't matter much. But what this does is grants all bonuses of unallocated small passive skills in the Radius. 
obvious. Imagine for just a moment in the picture that is to the uh, left of me, right of you, whichever direction that is, look look over there. Imagine for a second if you are able to fit in a couple of uh, spots where unnatural instinct is actually going to grab you maybe the entire wheel itself of an extended uh, various new passive nodes or maybe even a wheel and a half maybe two wheels depending on your positioning and depending on the way and the shape of the way how things will actually work out on the new passive tree i highly expect unnatural instinct to absolutely be bonkers for the upcoming league in terms of its price in softcore trade leagues the fifth prediction today is that low level maps with open layouts will be massively profitable oftentimes when we've got mechanics in poe that you can spam and that are weighted or have the potential to be weighted towards the front half of a particular map players will use this in order to spam or chain that particular map not rushing a boss not completing the map but just target farming the particular instance of a mechanic over and over and over again especially if it's a very very profitable league mechanic and of course if delirium turns out to be as profitable as it is looking to be then fully expect some sort of meta to show up similar to the glacier map farming that showed up in legion where players are essentially trying to find the mirror by which we are entering our nightmare and delirium as quickly as possible and then farming those as quickly as possible now all of this is a bit dependent on how delirium works if delirium is going to continue from instance to instance for instance from one part of a map zone into let's say another part of a map zone then all of this becomes moot and this prediction will be absolutely wrong so it totally depends on the way how delirium is going to function as a league mechanic with its timer and the way how it's going to interact with zones that already take place inside a zone whether or not they will continue for instance if you pop an abyss and you go down into an abyssal depths while you have already entered the mirror will it essentially pause the delirium encounter for you to come back after you fought and collected your stygian vice that's just one potential outcome that could happen depending on how delirium actually shakes up and how the mechanic actually plays out keep an eye on this because players during the first weekend and during the first week are going to absolutely be testing out different layouts to see if there's a particular way to manipulate the mechanic in order to generate the most amount of profit possible prediction number six today is that magic find items are indeed back on the menu boys we're talking bisco's collar we're talking bisco's leash we're talking venter's gamble we're talking goldworm and of course the hallmark of any good magic find build wind ripper itself which means of course if you are looking for either item rarity or item quantity these items are going to be going up in price so over the last league over 3.9 if you just started playing path of exile and you've never seen anything about magic find we've got a couple of videos about magic find they're going to be floating somewhere around my ethereal balding head but what i want you to realize is that you can build magic find in one of two ways you can either build it in order for items to drop currency more often that's using the item quantity tag or you can try to get more uniques to drop that's using the item rarity tag the reason why it's important to point out both of these for the delirium league is the fact that we've got a bunch of unique jewels that can drop from any monster that's inside a delirium mist zone or any monster that's affected by a delirium mist zone in other words if you are looking for particular jewels in order to extend out your passive tree which will be unique jewels in many circumstances then you can potentially farm them up by going not only quant farming for your magic find but also going rarity farming for your magic find so magic find items are back on the menu and i expect a lot of players to be using magic find builds and bow builds as we move into the 3.10 league simply because it's going to be a great way to once again potentially spam this very highly potentially lucrative league mechanic Prediction number seven today is that incubators will be more valuable to run. Incubators, those of you who are like, hey, wait a minute, Iron, what are incubators? I, sometimes I get those to drop, and are those actually worth anything? Well, right here is a snapshot of the value of various incubators inside the 3.10 Metamorph League at the end of the league. I want you to realize something for just a moment. Because incubators proc based off of monster kills, the more monster kills you can get inside every single zone means the more frequently you will be popping off your incubators this means that a lot of players who are going to be going well maybe magic find or maybe simply headhunter inspired learning incredibly fast maybe auto bomber builds that can simply zip through maps in incredibly high speeds are going to be loading up incubators and buying them in bulk like crazy 
The reason being, for you or for me, if we just have one or two incubators, it's probably not going to be worth it to try and risk it, right? It's not necessarily going to give us big returns over the long haul because we don't have a long haul. We're only using one or two incubators. Players who are using incubators on every single piece of equipment the entire time that they're running maps that are getting them to pop off every single map or every other map are going to be raking in the dough by purchasing incubators early and often in bulk and then using them throughout the entire duration of the league. So expect incubators to go up in price and if you get an incubator to drop for you that's great collect them trade them flip them because the fact is is the more monsters you can kill the more often you can get them to proc which means more profit in the long run if you are going for the use of incubators rather than simply the resale value of incubators our eighth prediction today that is sure to go wrong is that freeze and explosion builds will lead the meta okay we're talking about impulses here we're talking about things like three dragons which allow you to convert a whole bunch of damage and trade essentially the way how ailments work on different types of elemental damage also of course the new crusaders affix that we can roll that's a prefix killed enemies explode dealing a percentage of their life as physical damage and then of course other exploding and freezing mechanics like herald of ice all of these things are going to lead the me the meta the reason being magic find is back headhunters are back and exploding massive chain reaction builds are always a favorite whenever they are available whether it's coming in an auto bomber format which of course there are several different great auto bomber builds or it's coming in a magic find wind ripper build or if it's coming in something else entirely like let's say triple herald elementalist or in something else that might use impulses like maybe arc elementalist there are lots of different ways to actually proc either a freeze based build or an explosion based build and if this build is anything like we're thinking it's going to be which is going to be a spam low to mid tier sort of maps sort of league then indeed freeze and explosion based build are going to make it so that way you can zip through as many maps as you can in a short amount of time which generates you the most currency overall which then allows you to scale up your build and purchase better and better items that allows you to push higher and higher into top tier content with your speed build so i think freeze and explosion builds are actually going to lead the meta when we're talking about clearing our ninth prediction for today that is sure to go wrong is that blight maps will either be top tier or they'll be trash tier if we can use orbs of delirium on blight maps and they actually affect the explosions of the blight maps oh my goodness this will be like a whole next level of blight maps in in the evolution of blight maps in path of exile Right now, the way how Blight Maps work, it sort of is counterintuitive to a typical currency spending like, let's say, Orbs of Alchemy on a Blight Map because they really don't impact the overall turnout of a map overall in terms of the loot explosion that happens. They impact the loot explosion of defending the pump, they don't impact all of the various reward pockets that you get inside a blight map. If orbs of delirium actually impact the explosions and the rewards that you get inside a blight map, then that is going to massively, massively change the way how players are playing blight maps. And by change, I mean simply turn everybody onto blight maps. That will be the thing. That's the way how people are going to farm when it comes to delirium league. If, on the other hand, del orbs of delirium cannot interact with blight maps i would highly expect blight maps to actually receive a nerf in the upcoming patch cycle simply because so many players were playing them those of you who are new to path of exile might be saying blight maps why would blight maps get a nerf i love playing blight maps and they're a great way to generate currency well i've just got one meme to reference for you if you're not familiar with things getting nerfed in path of exile because they're popular or generate currency i've just got to ask you the question is this your first time our 10th and final prediction that is sure to go wrong is that physical items and their value are going to rise and potentially skyrocket. I don't want to sound too hyperbolic here, but what I mean by skyrocket is go up in significant value to where they're at in Metamorph League. And this is all going to be due to monk players, to players using the one with nothing small cluster jewel that is now available that adds the hollow palm technique. For those of you who didn't catch the stream the other day or haven't, heard exactly what this is players all over the place are going nuts because yes you can now cosplay as a monk you have to make sure that you are not wearing gloves and don't have anything in your main hand slot or anything in your offhand slot if you are in that mode then you are no longer counted as encumbered you are essentially unencumbered which means that you are now counting as dual wielding for anything that counts towards bonuses for dual wielding and you get 60 percent more attack speed while you're in this state of unencumbrance and you get a flat 14 to 20 added attack physical damage 
per 10 dexterity while you're unencumbered. So this means that players are going to want to stack decks, and they're going to stack an immense amount of physical damage. Highly expect steel rings and well-rolled steel rings that have got a ton of resistances on them because you're losing glove slot and you're losing a shield slot. Potentially, if you were typically using a face breaker build in the past, you would really rely on your shield to give you a whole bunch of either HP or resistances. So well-rolled, highly, highly specialized steel rings are going to be top, top tier. And of course, well-rolled Abyssus helmets that have got the appropriate lab and chance for unarmed skills are going to be top tier in terms of demand and in terms of usage by players who are wanting to cosplay as a monk. Then again, if you're wanting to run around as a monk, maybe you just won't even use a helmet. I mean, screw it at that point, right? Just go full on monk and blow up the game without even wearing Abyssus. Well, thanks so much for watching. What are your predictions for Delirium League? Those are my 10 predictions that are sure to go wrong, but I'm sure you all have predictions as well for the upcoming 3.10 Delirium League. Go ahead and drop us a comment down below with your thoughts and your reactions. And as always, I hope that today is the day a Mirror of Calandra drops for you. And if it doesn't happen today, then hopefully it happens during 3.10 Delirium League. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.